Yes! Yes! Yeah! 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 I saw Expendables. I uh, actually saw it before Scott Pilgrim. I haven't seen Scott Pilgrim. Um, I don't know if I should read the book before I see Scott Pilgrim. Should I? Because I haven't read them yet. And that kept me from seeing Scott Pilgrim. That and I was about 300 times more excited for The Expendables. This is the first time I can remember since I saw The Rundown that I had this much fun with this kind of movie. Uh, this was a super awesome man movie. Capital M, capital M. This was great, and there were a lot of times where it could have done things that a lot of action movies do that usually make me go like, aw, did you have to do that action movie thing? Only Expendables doesn't do it! Let's get the cons out of the way. Yes, there's CG blood. And to be honest, the CG blood, in my opinion, was not that bad. Uh, I mean, I am usually not bothered by it, but it really didn't bug me that much at all in this movie. And my friend Jacob, who really gets on CG blood's case, um, basically said that it didn't bother him as much as it usually does. Although he made a good point that the CG buildings were maybe going a little bit far. Um, but, it, you know, <laughs> it's definitely not something that's going to make you completely feel out of the movie, in my opinion. If the CG blood makes you dislike The Expendables, I don't think you were going to like it in the first place. There are those that have come down on The Expendables for its story, and I actually kind of disagree with that criticism. Yes, it has a simple story. Yes, it's a, it's a dumb action movie. But the thing is, it doesn't try to shoehorn in anything else, and that actually makes it better, in my opinion. What The Expendables does really well is that it avoids adding in cherries and icing that a lot of other action movies add in, where whenever you hit one of those moments, like forced character drama, like, um, you know, killing off likable characters, like stuff like that, or, you know, killing them off like in a pointless way. Uh, just for the sake of drama, or trying to convey some kind of serious message in an overbearing, ham-fisted way, The Expendables doesn't do that, in my opinion. Now, it does have a, a storyline that Stallone likes to do, which is an old guy uh, redeeming himself, but you know, Stallone is kind of good at doing that, so I don't really mind. There is a moment of deep character introspection with Mickey Rourke's character, but, um, here's the thing. If you try to tell me that that was poorly done, or that that was shoddy, um... I disagree a whole lot. Mickey Rourke's uh, moment that I'm talking about was this uh, beautiful uh, one-take, one-shot, close-up character disassembly uh, that basically inspired another character to do something and kind of drove the crux of the second half of the movie. And I thought it was really good. Um, Mickey Rourke is the guy who can do those kind of things. He's got the face for it, as my friend Jacob said. And um, the thing that the movie does so well is that it actually really was kind to every actor that was in it. Uh, when you have a guy who's able to actually do a really good, legit moment of acting like Mickey Rourke, guess who gets the legit moment of acting? Mickey Rourke. Uh, when you have guys who are not all that good at acting, like Randy Couture, guess who barely has any lines? Randy Couture. He's a UFC dude who does some action stuff on the side or whatever, and he didn't really drag the movie down because... The movie structured itself to feature him only when he really needed to be featured. He had this kind of weird moment where he talked about cauliflower ear, which is kind of odd, but it was so short that it didn't really make you fully stop and go like, stop talking. The cast was glorious. I went in and I didn't know about some of the cast members, so number one, when I saw that Gary Daniels was in it, I was like, yeah! And then I saw another name. Eric! I know Roberts! I love Eric Roberts a lot. And when you have your villain team of your movie be Eric Roberts and his henchman Gary Daniels and Stone Cold Steve Austin, you have a good villain team! You know, there are a lot of people who don't like Steve Austin, and... You know, when he plays a bad guy in a movie like this, I think he's great. Because, number one, you aren't supposed to get behind him entirely, so if you don't like him, then you can totally cheer on when the good guys, you know, smack him or something like that. Number two, say what you want about pro wrestling, blah blah blah, but the dude is pretty good at acting like a jerk and a badass jerk. It's also rounded off by this crazy general played by the dude who plays Detective Angel in Dexter. In Dexter, he plays a very heartfelt, soulful, uh heavily emotional dude with a lot of empathy. In this movie, he is an insane general, and he's good at it. And I didn't know he was in the movie either until I saw him pop up, and I was like, 
Angel! You're scary. Stallone was great. That's all. Jet Li, um, again, a guy who can't really speak English, guess what? He didn't do very much of speaking English. Uh, he had lines, but he was played, just like with Randy Couture, just like with uh, Dolph Lundgren, actually. The, as I said, the movie really just, like, built this glove for them to fit into. Uh, Jet Li and Dolph Lundgren, um, they played cool characters. Dolph Lundgren played a really cool character. And uh, they were in the movie enough, they had fight scene. But they didn't sit there trying to chew through exposition or anything. Alright, yeah, there was that scene with Bruce Willis and Arnold Schwarzenegger, and that was a pretty cool scene, and the audience was so the hell into that scene, and that made me get so the hell into that scene, and I, I liked it. And I liked that it was early on, too, because the movie kind of, like, showed its balls to you. It was like, we're gonna do the scene right now. Now we have a whole movie to do. And basically it makes you, as an audience member, at least in my opinion, kind of go like, dude, if they're gonna blow that wad right now... I'm in! Of course I have heard that some folks felt that it blew the wad too early, but you know, I, I kind of disagree with that. The action was great, and there was tons of it. So many set pieces, so many glorious action moments. Now, if you are looking for story and character, in my opinion, it's there. The story is very simple. It's mercenaries, it's insane dictators, it's Eric Roberts as a mastermind. Also, um, St Stallone is such a badass, when he gets tattoos done, he sits on a goddamn motorcycle. Jason Statham is great, too. I am a big supporter of Jason Statham. Uh, even when he's in a role that he, he himself clearly does not want to be in, I kind of have fun watching him. Um, Dungeon Siege. By the way, um, if you're female and want to see The Expendables, and you're wondering if it has anything for you, considering all the manliness I'm expositing about, uh, yes, it does, because if you see it, you will, in fact, grow phantom balls and feel exactly what we of testosterone are feeling. SPOILER TIME! I'm going to share just a couple little bits of spoilery info now, so if you don't want to know spoilers about The Expendables, don't listen to this. And I'm sure some of you are thinking, what are you... what, what, what can possibly be spoiled about The Expendables? Um, there are a few little things that, if you don't know about them, they can kind of enhance your experience. But if you don't want to be spoiled in The Expendables, if you're locked in on going to see The Expendables and you haven't yet, then turn this video off now. If you don't think you're going to see it, then sure, stay tuned. Because, you know, it's not like there are groundbreaking plot twists for me to cripple for you, but if you're gonna see it, then don't let me ruin this a little bit for you. Okay, so this is not really that much of a spoiler, but there's this awesome moment when Jason Statham and Stallone are escaping in their uh, in their airplane, because uh, Stallone flies a plane and he, he parks it in water and stuff like that at a dock, and they're escaping it and they fly off, and I think to myself, alright, that was a pretty cool scene, because it's a pretty intense-ass scene. Statham gets under Stallone and crawls into the nose cone of the plane after saying something like flash and burn or something like that, and I'm like, what are they talking about? Stallone turns the plane back around, and I'm like, oh, oh. Those bad guys are screwed. Statham pops up out of the front of the, the plane, like his head just pops up out of the nose cone, and he starts working some things, and I'm like, what? And then, like, some little trap doors slide open on, on the side of the plane, and some goddamn machine guns come out, and I'm like, oh! Oh! And then, they fly in low towards the guys who just chased them off the dock. Butta 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 butta! And dudes, dudes are screwed! They are getting shot up all over the place. And then, it's the best part, right? Not only do they unload with some goddamn machine guns, capital G, capital D, capital M, capital G! Stallone's character dumps a spray of fuel over top of them all, and Steve Austin's all like, what's this? And Gary Dan's like, oi, what? And Statham, like, shoots once at them. It's gasoline! The entire dock blows the crap apart! And that's not even the climax action piece. If I'm getting a little bit animate, that's because this movie was the kind of movie that gets you really animate. Okay, here's the other thing I like, and this is going to be a lot more spoilery. One of the many action tropes... You see, this movie almost falls into action tropes, like it hovers over them, but then doesn't fall into them, because it's made by people who watched and made these movies that we all loved when we were little. And it's like they know the craft. They know exactly where everyone who watches action movies always goes, oh no. And they were like, all right, we're hitting one of those oh no moments. How do we make this awesome? Like, for instance, the heroes don't just fly away. No, they come back and a machine gun blow the dock up. But here's the best part, okay? 
and I know some of you might not think this is good, but, but bear with me. I think this was what made the movie so great. None of the main protagonists die. No one gets offed to make someone look badass. No main character gets a tragic death scene just cause. Just to make Stallone's character mad, or just to make Statham's character mad. No. The, the, the Expendables, the protagonists, the badasses, the, the black dude with the gun that is louder than the entire movie, and that is a plot point, those guys survive... And they are badasses about doing it. They do not look like... They don't look like Superman. It doesn't look like they're invincible. You you kind of worry about them a little bit, but you also feel secure because they are... They are friggin' action stars. So, I was a little worried that Gary Daniels and Steve Austin would kind of get, for lack of better term, bitch-killed. Because they are the villains. And often, you know, like, especially in a Seagal movie, the villains sometimes don't really get to do much. Like, the Jamaican drug lord movie, where it's, like, the main villain, he just, like, drops over his knee and boom, he's done. Um, okay, like, Gary Daniels' character is a badass, because the dude, when he gets taken down, it takes two dudes. It takes, I think it's uh, Couture and Jet Li, and during his fight with them, he gets, like, he gets, like, messed up, and he just keeps getting back up. He gets, like, you know, boom, across the face, back up. He gets a knife thrown into the back of his neck. He just goes, like, ah, and he's like, shakes it off and keeps going. I'm like, dude, it takes two of them to get him, and the only way they really get him, aside from the fact that Couture's UFC, like, MMA body slamming the guy everywhere, and Jet Li's kicking his face apart, it's like, Couture, like, holds him, Jet Li, like, does a spinning kick, and, like, imagine, okay, imagine, this is where his head is, and this is the rest of his body, and this is his neck, gets kicked, and, like, crack, his, his head is like hanging off the back of his neck like like a friggin rag doll that just got like thrown into a wall it's it's awesome and Steve Austin is not killed immediately Steve Austin again I know some of you guys don't like Steve Austin but he gets to be cool in this I mean he gets to beat up Stallone legit um, he gets scared off by the gun that's louder than the movie but then he gets this fight against Couture and like Steve Austin gets thrown into a pit of burning gasoline and he's all like ah ah 316 ah and you're like okay well that's all he gets out of there and he actually rushes Couture and Couture like has to like do a flying MMA punch right into his burning ashen disintegrating face Austin goes back into the pit of burning gasoline and he's still going like Argh! and I was like like Eric Roberts hires friggin super villains Eric Roberts is awesome by the way he is having so much fun he's playing an Eric Roberts character when he shows up I had I actually started to just chuckle and laugh and had the biggest my grin was like this big the way he gets killed he gets this speech and I, I kind of you know I was worried because Eric Roberts isn't a guy who's gonna have a big fight scene with KOTOR even though he had a pretty damn hilarious fight scene at the end of Dead or Alive which I highly recommend watching entirely for Eric Roberts he kind of gets just like obliterated like you know the the suit the, the end suited bad guy with the tie usually does but there's an, a neat little twist on it. Again, CG involved. I know some folks think that this kind of sucks, but for some reason, maybe it's because I watched Computer Warriors when I was a kid. CG effects don't really take me out of it that much, provided they're done in a, in a vaguely straight-faced way. And he basically gets, like, gunned up, and then a huge CG knife from Statham just chunk right out the front of his chest. But Eric Roberts sells it so well. I could tell it's, it's so obviously CG, but who cares? Because Eric Roberts is all like, Arr! because he's got, like, this Friggin', he's got this friggin' butcher knife sticking out. Okay, I love it. I'm sorry. Uh, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of criticisms people have leveled against the Expendables. There's a lot of people who have come down on the movie for various reasons, and I have yet to read a criticism that I would consider to be anything above middling and piddling and a waste of my time. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be condescending about it, I'm not sure how to word this better, but The Expendables, I guess, is a movie where either you love it or you don't, and no one's gonna convince anyone on either end of the argument any other way about it. So, um, in a case where I like to be objective, I guess I have to throw in with a side on this one, so I'm gonna say The Expendables was awesome, and you had better go see it! If at least for the sake of being able to give a more detailed um, account of why you don't like it. Nobody is too smart to watch The Expendables, and The Expendables will not make you dumb. However, it may not jive with your taste, that's, that's absolutely possible, and um, I kind of feel bad for you if it doesn't, <laughs> because the sheer unabashed joy the movie brought me, I, I feel a little bit heartbroken that there are some who just cannot feel that same joy. And I certainly can hate movies. Ask me about Max Payne sometime. But The Expendables? I can only love. And this is part where Jason Statham friggin' beats 
This like you think he's not gonna have the fight with this dude, and you're all like, oh no, he pussed out. No, that was to set up so he has a fight with like seventeen dudes, and friggin' goes like puts this ball on their chest and goes like sticks a knife in, and he's all like, and then and then he's all like, next time I see you, I'm gonna deflate all your balls. Yes, yes.